are my friend! How fortuitous to run into you in this most intoxicating place! I'd offer you a drink, but, uh, for some reason the workers won't let me borrow any of their wine. Cheapskates. As you can probably tell by all the grapes, this is one of Greece's many vineyards. Wine was an essential part of Greek culture, and this tour will take you through how it was made. In addition to being delicious, not to mention lucrative, wine was an important part of Greek economy. I promise I'll meet you at the end of your visit, my friend. See you soon! Winemaking dates back to the 4th or 3rd millennium BCE. It became widespread in Greece during the Bronze Age, and within centuries the Greeks had refined it further. The first step in the process was always harvesting, where grapes grown on rows of vines were collected by vineyard workers. According to Homer, harvesting was often accompanied by music to give it a more festive atmosphere. Ancient Greek wine mainly came in three different varieties, Osteros, Glucotion, and Autocratos. It could be flavored with spices, herbs, resin, and even perfume. It was also much stronger than modern wine, with an alcohol percentage of approximately 16%. Because of this, the drink was mixed with water to make it more palatable. Grapes were dried to maximize the wine's sweetness and prevent it from turning into vinegar. In most vineyards, the drying process involved laying the grapes out on the ground under the heat of the sun, then covering them at night to protect them from accumulating dew. According to Hesiod's poem, Works in Days, the ideal time to dry grapes was 10 days and 10 nights. When they were finally completely dried, the grapes were collected in jars, just as they are today. The Greeks had many methods for crushing the harvested grapes. The most common technique was to use a lenos, a large treading vat where workers stomped on grapes with their feet. Alternatively, the Greeks sometimes crushed the grapes by hand using a strainer, mash them with a mortar and pestle, or squeeze them using a tool called a sack press. After the grapes were pressed, the resulting juice was poured into large containers called pithoi, where it fermented. Once fully fermented, the wine was filtered through an ethmos, or sac, which separated it from the residual yeast called lees. The wine was then placed in a special storage room. The room was half buried to keep it dry and maintain a consistent temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. These measures ensured the wine wouldn't lose any of its quality before being shipped to market. When the wine was ready to ship, it was poured into storage containers called amphoras. These were smaller than pithoi, which made them easier to ship and display in crowded marketplaces. However, that doesn't mean transporting wine was always a safe endeavor. Sometimes ships carrying amphoras as cargo would be wrecked before making it to their destination, losing hundreds of bottles of wine to the sea.
my friend, are you drunk with knowledge? I hope you enjoyed yourself learning about all the picking, stomping, and bottling that goes into making Greece's favorite beverage. Maybe if my customers understood how hard winemaking was, they'd agree more with my perfectly reasonable prices. But let's talk about something else, yes? What else can I do for you? If you say so, my friend, I hope we see each other again soon.